We'll see how they behave around this puddle. It's Monday, and I actually have help today. Carissa stayed at her grandparents last night. I'm not sure if it, I'm not sure if she had a family uh, reunion or get together or something, but she said she's in the area and she could help me do chores. So she's doing chores, but my feed cart needs serviced big time, especially before Mark leaves for Australia. He gave that big announcement last week. I'll put a tag to his video as to kind of what our winter is shaping up to look like. But anyway, the feed cart pull cord keeps stretching out. It's not springing, it's not recoiling back in, and it's been a big pain in the butt. Just show you what I'm looking at here. Sit. Okay, so yeah, this, uh, the cord here is just not recoiling back in. So I'm pretty sure there's a spring busted or missing in here. Uh, so we've been just having to take the cover off, recoil it, and then that gives us a few days worth of excess cord to be able to pull but I need to get this in the shop I'm hoping today get the tires looked at get the oil filled <clears throat> some filters changed and get this thing fixed once and for all there see if that works Carissa Got a girl Last week I really was starting to, I was sitting down at my computer trying to go through all the ewes that I want to get ready for breeding. I'm going to be breeding here next week and I have a, a great big group of ewe lambs so they were born last March to actually the mums that just finished lambing here in December. I have to run them through and get their tag numbers. I thought I had done that but I think it was all in the, in the other barn when they were still market lambs so they weren't really designated as ewe lambs in anywhere in my records. So I actually want to run that group through and I all I need to do is scan their tag and and actually it's not a bad thing these ewe lambs because they're such sucks like they're so used to me that there's no fear of me so it's really hard to push sheep when they're not you kind of want a little bit of fear in them just so they move for you these ladies are such sucks that you get part of the group moving and they turn around and they come back. And I'm also trying to work with Kinsey a little more. It's not a bad habit just to get those animals used to that handling system because they're just not used to it, especially over in this barn. They got used to it across the road, but never in this barn yet. So not a bad thing to run them through a couple more times. All those yellow tags in their ears, they're scannable with my Gallagher system, with my gun. So all I have to do is scan their tag and all their info comes up on my screen and then I have all that information then I can and then I'll take that information go to my computer upload it to the Gallagher software and start making reports uh, seeing who they are sired by and make sure when I go to put them in with the Rams that they're not in with their with their potential dad so that's kinda why I wanna get them sorted and ID'd and then I can really sit down and start analyzing who I'm gonna read to who well my curtains did not open. I don't know what's going on, but now it's foggy. And all the bedding we did this morning is now soaking wet. Oh. These guys look pretty good though, Carissa. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Hey. This is all wet, so they're not gonna wanna move. So what we might have to do is spread some straw through this whole area and then we'll have to clean it all up again because they will think all these little puddles are holes and they will not walk through there. So this job just became a bit harder. Hi guys. Alright, so yeah, I'm going to run these through and I, all I'm doing today is scanning their tags and then I want to just analyze their information in the office.
we got them all moved in and it was it was as difficult as I thought it was gonna be. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is scan the use and get their data, that's it. There's a little puddle here. We'll see how they behave around this puddle. going to show you up close what I do here. So just scan these tags. And then it goes here. Uh, so far we've got 118. Carissa's still got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's about right. 124. And there was one without a tag, which is 125. And I'll have to figure out who that one is, which might prove to be difficult. Chris is just cleaning up here. I have spent all afternoon pretty much going through um, my computer. It's shut off now because I needed, we needed to separate. So I have everything uploaded into my Gallagher, who I'm going to breed to who. I had about 90 Suffolk or Ile-de-France sired ewe lambs. I'm going to put them with the Rito rams. So they're going to be sired by Rito. I have 33 Rito you lambs that I'm going to breed to my Suffolk rams and then all my new, new steel you or all my new steel rams and I think I already told you guys this I'm going to put on those mature ewes just because they know what's going on and the rams potentially may not know exactly what's going on because they're a little younger so that's the scoop I'm running out to the uh I'm gonna run out to the 
Why are you in here? How long have you been in here? Oh, and she was really, really, you were really good today. Come here. She was amazing in the barn and just me slowing down and talking to her. So if she ever got ahead of me, I would stop. So I would stop and I'd say back and she'd come back and I'd say, good girl. And we'd do that every single time. And we got to the point where once I got to the very far where I wanted them and before I could even say back, she, she knew I was gonna say it and she came back. So she has made so much progress and I literally have just started training her. Well, train Sandy training, which is just, if I remember. My training to you is just not yelling at you. Hey, you were so good. You were so good. What was I saying? Oh, I'm going to the shop now and I think Mark's in there fixing a, a duel or something. And I want him to look at my feed cart before he loses all motivation because it is the end of the day. To take this bad boy to the shop and get some TLC. Get the cord figured out, get this straightened out because it's seen a few feed bunks, I think. It's got a real slow cold start. It's slow, the hydraulics are really slow and that's usually got pretty much to do with the oil it seems like in this thing. So I'll get Mark to check the oil and um, check the tire pressures. And that's pretty much the speed carts. It's pretty low maintenance for the most part, except for what I do to it. This is kind of the inside of the machine. This can all get lubed up and there's grease fittings that need greased. So we try to do that twice a year, we try. Um, and this probably could get topped up a little bit. This oil is probably okay, Mark, or do we need, like, do you ever have to drop the oil or is it okay? What kind of oil is it called? 5W40. Yeah, you just add it. You just add it. And then we changed the filter last year, right? No, or a couple years ago. Do we need a new one again? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. There's the manual for that thing is in the filing cabinet if you want to read the service bit. All right. Just below the full line. Because it'll heat up and expand, right? Well, but it got all this room, right? You give me a 7 16th and a sh shop time. Mm -hmm. And some brake cleaning.
Wrong one. Yeah, it's uh... Do you need more brake cleaner? The feed cart is proving to be the equivalent of husband and wife wallpapering together. So I think I'm going to spare you guys that whole thing and just pray that I have a working feed cart in the morning. I just picked the day that Mark was also doing a job using kind of the same tools. So I think he's a little, he's patient, but I think he's a little frustrated that I picked today to, feed, to fix a feed cart. Well, the barn's starting to dry up a little bit.